What's up guys, we're doing a commentary video over uh, a highlight of one of my dreams. We got me versus pig. Pig Zerg, actually. Someone suggested that I do commentary over highlights and stuff like that. I thought it was a good idea. I mean, I thought it was such a good idea. I already did one a couple months before that suggestion, but it did remind me that I did do that in the past. And uh, I don't really remember why I stopped, to be honest. Maybe just because I couldn't find a good enough game. But I do want to start doing these again. I'm not quite sure if I want to do a full commentary over the entire game or just stop midway through and let the music rip, let the natural commentary come through. But in the early game, it's definitely hard to talk because there's so much going on. You're setting up the building blocks for the game. And there is a lot to talk about because it's a lot of theory. And there are good reasons for just about everything, but I think in the mid game to late game, it's a lot more instincts, and it is very hard to talk because there's so much that needs to be done in a moment's notice. But I think um, I think it's a little bit more entertaining just to watch that for what it is, but and there's less to talk about really. But um, we'll see. Let's see what I end up doing. Let's see what. The, Asked or future Isaac rather ends up doing. I never wall the ramp anymore because it just can't be fucked. I don't even remember how to do the hatch wall. It's been so long. I should probably just know that. It's like a branding thing. Not that I made that, but uh, I advertised it heavily, so. Kind of like obligated to or something. Okay, what the fuck is that Ovi? Is that a second Obi? <laughs> Fucking boomer Zerg players, man, never sent out their Obi. <laughs> Properly. You might notice that I'm gonna be pulling in audio from the actual stream and then I'll also be having the commentary over it and hopefully this makes sense in post and doesn't look like a shit show, but I think there is some stuff that I say that is honestly pretty spot on. Can't say it much better, but there's also a lot of things that I could explain, like why am I talking about my pool placement in, in the wall? I mean, I, some people that makes zero sense. So, what I'm basically talking about is is the old guide that I made for 12 pool drone pool and walling it off. I, I don't even put my pool in place for it anymore because I just I just don't even think about it. But it's it's kind of funny that I wouldn't be doing it when I was the one who advocated it so hard in the past. And then I talked about pigs. OV being a boomer or something, <laughs> which also sounds equally crazy. I just mean that uh, he sends it late. I think Vibe also sends it late, but I think on purpose. I send it late too, but not on purpose because I'm just a boomer. But I say that as a 22 year old, but I just forget. It's streamer's curse, I guess you could say, is, is another way of saying it. But the playing versus Pig Zerg is interesting because last time I played Pig Zerg, I went like. Lair before Bane Nest. In this game, I'm going Bane Nest before Lair, which is standard for two base muta at, at least. But the last couple times, even when I played Pig, I'd go Lair before Bane Nest, and he would just like ling all in me or ling bling pressure. And I would just fall over and die, and he would always be like, "What? Well, why would you do this build? This is so terrible!" And I, I just wouldn't be paying attention, and I would just do the absolute greediest build ever. And my response: uh, Yes, that that is supposed to die. But I think. Pig assumes that I just play like that every game, which I think is kind of funny, just because coincidentally I did that the last two times I played a Zerg, so this game I did play more normal, and surprisingly he didn't put a lot of pressure on me. He actually let it let it go pretty, pretty relaxed, so <laughs> I thought that was kind of interesting. I was expecting the pressure. I got the spy and the queens. I'm, I'm always keeping the queens on, on the net because I do mind games sometimes and I'll have like an Evo my main or a Roach Warren and I'll go for an attack. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I, I play very tricky in ZVZ now because after I stopped playing tournaments I was like, well I just kind of want to have fun. So that's kind of been my focus is just playing a, a goofy style. Because I think that's the, the most fun way to play at the dismay of my opponents. So. This is a point in the game where, with two base muta, you can easily 
start droning. I mean, I, I almost always will over drone my natural, and then as soon as my third's done, I'll just send a bunch of lings or, or a bunch of drones over to the third and just saturate it right away. But I kind of got the feeling that he was playing a little greedier, and I did want to attack him. Oh man, his spire is actually pretty fucking greedy. Ugh. Quick one. You can see his, his meter, or his spire rather, is actually pretty comparable to mine in timing, so I was kind of worried about that. I really wanted to put on some pressure, so. I think this is good sometimes. I don't think it's always good. But I kind of flip-flop on whether or not I think it's good or bad. I mean, back two years ago when I first started doing this, it was wonderful, but people have gotten better and better, and they're more on point on when exactly they're supposed to stop droning, so it, it's tough sometimes. With that said, though, this is going pretty well. Sniping these queens is really nice. The big advantage to 2 base meter versus 3 base meter usually is that you can get the meters in their base as theirs are coming out and you can kind of pick them off as they're coming in, in one to two groups and you have like maybe uh, eight just above their third for example. But this game I, I made so many lings that I actually just couldn't do that. That was not in the cards so it's just getting as many drones as possible and then trying to macro out and hopefully I end up ahead. Oh my god, if I don't lose this queen, um, that's insane though. I guess his spine could have been in a better spot, huh? Yeah, only starting my air upgrades now. I think that was armor upgrades, I'm not entirely sure, but that's a pretty rough timing. Especially with two base meter, that's usually my only advantage, but not, not looking as secure I don't here. I think I necessarily have one. My upgrades weren't as quickly as they could be. But I also kind of fucked up his economy. Yeah, so you can hear me audibly trying to figure out where I'm at in this game. Kind of funny. I really don't know. Of course, always trying to get vision with the lings and the overlords, trying to make sure you don't get blindsided by anything. You need to see if he's trying to take a fourth. Fourth is a really big indicator of Saturation. Usually, I say that, but I also have people with like five drones in their third, and they'll take a fourth. So maybe that's all a lie. But me seeing a fourth there is pretty scary because I'm four drones from saturated. It sucks because usually my my stick is I do a anti timing. Well, I have a better upgrade. I'm actually surprised that I think that I have a better upgrade here because. I took it so late, uh, like surely I don't, but past me is actually very confident about this. But uh, yeah, this kind of sets the stage. Um, I think I'll leave you guys with this game. Nice. Oh. What am I doing? Oh my god.
Cool. Slings are way too powerful in spots like these. Oh, does he have more actually? Oh shit. I just shit myself. I just shit and piss myself. Nice, I'm in. 